for some reason on iPad. So today, maybe I will just talk about uh, about a practical issue. Uh, so is it, a, is it glaucoma? So uh, often we are faced with a difficulty that uh, whether whether uh, we when we have lots of glaucoma uh, myopia patient here, and as well as we have a lot of uh, uh, glaucoma patient at the same time, why we are concerned is that the problem of glaucoma and myopia are always linked together. They always come, most of the time they come in hand in hand. Uh, as we all know, that the odds of glaucoma is high in my, myopic eyes, and that will, there will be myopia causing uh, myopia will actually cause elongation of the globe causing structural susceptibility of the ganglion cells to mechanical stress. And there are also myopic features, uh, which are similar to glaucomatous change. And the third point is very important because we are going to deal with this for, uh, from, day to, uh, from time to time. So then we are going to talk about it, where, uh, how we are going to approach that. So in our traditional understanding, we start the glaucoma diagnosis by, first of all, that uh, we, we know that glaucoma disease is a degenerative and progressive optic neuropathy. And then we first, uh, we first usually start by measuring the intraocular pressure and also examine the optic disc to look for features suggestive of glaucomatous change. And then in the, uh, in the earlier studies, the, uh, the, in the first, uh, earlier studies uh, to identify the effect of the intervention, we usually use the Humphrey visual field as a diagnostic criteria for, uh, for, uh, for glaucoma. So then, uh, but each of them has some problems when we are going through myopia patients. First of all, let's start with clinical examination. So then what are the problems of optic disc? Uh, it's very difficult to delineate a cup of in uh, myopic, uh, myopic patients, as the rim may show pallor and the cupping may be difficult to tell as the club is flattened. And there's also this tilting, which is more common in myopia patients. And this is very difficult in tilted discs that we try to determine the cup disc ratio. And then uh, in addition, there may be peripapillary atrophy, which makes the delineation difficult. And then the myopic and uh, myopic changes in terms of uh, peripapillary atrophy is actually uh, is actually quite uh, is indistinguish uh, is indistinguishable with uh, those patients who are suffering from glaucoma. So this is the typical type of patients that we're facing day to day. That we have a lot of uh, peripapillary atrophy, and that this is not really well delineated. And then it's very difficult because the cup is very shallow. Then uh, if you uh, first of all, if you judge by the color or by the depth, it's very difficult to delineate. So then uh, we try to supplement the clinical examination with visual field. Uh, this is the classical diagnostic criteria in terms of glaucoma. But as we all know that uh, nowadays, uh, glaucoma, the functional, uh, the, the functional change is always before structural changes. And then you need a significant structural change before you have some uh, optic nerve dysfunction. So, uh, so uh, what, what is the role of visual field currently? I think the, uh, it is not for the initial diagnostic procedure, but then if it would be best if then we can show that there are functional changes uh, which are correlating with structural changes. However, we all know that in the real world, this, the life is all, not always easy. There will be coexisting maculopathy in myopic eyes, which will also affect the visual, uh, visual field. So a classical description of myopic glaucoma is that there will be sent early central or paracentral spotoma, but then it's not always the case. You can find, you know, you can find something just like the textbook. So then this is one of our patients. And then it, uh, if you can see that for the right time, uh, this, is, this is a patient referred for a, a glaucoma suspect with, a, with increased cup ratio. If you can see that they're actually for the right side, there are some earlier, uh, early, early changes which are not typical. The aqua defect, which are more like, uh, more, which are more like those, uh, the, those with the central involvement, as you can see, the left eye is relatively preserved. But then, if we go to the OCT, there has been already some uh, thinning of the um, retinal nerve fiber layer. So then, in case in com combined risk factor and also some early functional changes. If there are some changes, I would tend to start treatment. And then maybe for the left side, because there are some early structural changes, so I then uh, I would treat that as a perimetric disease and also start a treatment altogether. 
So then there comes the optical coherence tomography, which is our main part of uh, for uh, glaucoma diagnosis right now. So this is a key investigation procedure in the structural assessment of the optic nerve. So then uh, uh, previously we focused mainly on the neuroretinal rim, but we know that the retinal nerve fiber layer is more relevant to the glaucoma progression. So then uh, we, uh, but then optical coherence tomography has a lot of problems as involved in myopic patients. For example, for, for the neural retinal rim, we know that the, di uh, the diagnosis is based on the bruce membrane opening, which may not be that clear cut in those with disrupted optic disc as in myopic patients. And then, uh, and then for retinal nerve fiber layer uh, evaluation, there may be some, uh, the, because the eyeball is distorted, it is not that classical distribution. And then the supertemporal and infratemporal bundles will get closer temporally. And then there may be abnormal thickened retinal nerve fiber layer temporally, but thin out inferior and superiorly. And then uh, one of the additional problem is that we, we have to, uh, the commercially available database is made essentially on those normal uh, with uh, relatively normal or low myopia patients. And then there's lacking of high myopia normative database for those patients. So this is a typical example of, as you can see, that of a myopic patient undergoing uh, optic, nerve, uh, optic coherence tomography. As you can see that the optic disc is actually distorted. And then the, uh, the picture actually uh, pretty, uh, beautifully shows the classical features which are showed in myopia patients, so, uh, such as the uh, supratemporal and temporal thinning, and then there's some, uh, some sort of uh, abnormal thickening of the temporal area. So then how we are going to, uh, how we are going to proceed? So, uh, in this case, uh, in some of the cases, because of limitation in resources, then we may we may need to wait for some time until the features develop. But if uh, if uh, if uh, resources are allowed, I think that one of the, the diagnostic clue is that for uh, we know that this is a progressive myopic, uh, progressive optic neuropathy. So then, if we uh, if with time it decrease uh, it progress with time, then we are uh, more likely to conclude that it's likely to be an optic. Uh, but to be a case of glaucomatous changes. But then this illustrates the difficulties that we are facing when we are just faced with one cut of the optical coherence tomography. And then sometimes we, in, the, in view of limited resource, this is what we, we have in, within a short period of time. So, uh, and so this is the current situation about the optical coherence tomography, at least for those readily available in clinical, clinical use. So uh, we, we are very concerned about whether, we, whether the current modern development in terms of imaging can help or any other mod modalities can help. So for uh, laminar cribrosa imaging has been proposed for a long time that the laminar cribrosa will actually have defects uh, uh, which are detectable in, in multiple patients with glaucoma using extended depth imaging. But the problem is that this is not routinely available in commercially available types of OCT. So uh, an other hope will be the ganglion cell uh, in a platform layer evaluation. This is based on the, uh, this is based on the uh, classical distribution of the optic nerve fiber layer running in a arcoid uh, uh, along the rafe. So then if, if, uh, if by in the perfect scenario, if that uh, we can find that uh, if, uh, if the case that the optic disc is distorted, and where the macula is relatively stable, uh, relatively stable, then uh, we may be able to conclude that uh, <clears throat> we may be able to use the macular findings to see whether there are any uh, glaucomatous changes. And then, if best, we can, uh, in case if the scanning around the optic disc and also the macular area concludes with each other, showing some focal defects. Then we are very, uh, we, are, we are highly, uh, uh, we are highly confident that it's likely to be a glaucomatous change. But then, uh, but then, uh, one, one, uh, once again, this is not uh, the uh, macular imaging in terms of glaucoma diagnosis is not, uh, is not highly, uh, highly verified. And then mainly, uh, currently, the current protocols is mainly for research purpose or as a, sub, uh, as a supplementary information regarding the, in, in addition to the disc. So then the uh, routine use is still limited. So uh, another, another thing that we are interested in will be the vascular evaluation of the perfusion around the optic disc. 
and that the vessel density and colloidal thickness in the literature have been found to be reduced in myopia. And then, uh, so uh, the, in addition, there will be reduced blood flow found in glaucoma. Uh, so uh, are there any parameters to distinguish these two? And then uh, the other thing is that the myopia is a relatively generalized uh, defect versus a focal defect. So, but so far, uh, the, the, uh, the most helpful study based on the OCT show no additional benefit for diagnosis. So uh, other modalities like electrophysiology may overhaul, but then you know that electrophysiology will be very difficult and will be very difficult to, to be performed on those patients. So uh, another thing is that the artificial intelligence and machine learning will be uh, maybe useful if we can combine because, because the, this is a black box approach, which may be helped to tackle about the ambiguity based on machine learning. But, uh, but then this, uh, this will, uh, will involve a lot of time to develop a good algorithm, which may help to improve the clinical diagnosis. So I think that in conclusion, that each of the individual modalities is not perfect for the diagnosing glaucoma in myopia patients. And then this, uh, actually there is a subjective arbitration involved in the present time. And then it's very difficult to, uh, for us to have a objective arbitration to say, whether they are any, whether this is glaucoma or not, based on the clearing protocol, and then time will be another domain, and then the combination of the modalities may be the key, and then and one of the things that which may help to combine that will be artificial intelligence. So I think that if, because in, in limited time, I will conclude here, and then we may have a discussion later on. So thank you.